This Netflix original movie came out last month, Eurovision, and soon after I saw some review panning it, so I decided it wasn't something that I needed to see. Now, maybe it's a great movie, but I want to be clear on this from the get-go. As of this recording, I have not seen this movie. But the other day, I got an email from my friend Mortimer West with a subject line, OK, serious question. In the email, he asked, from a purely music theory perspective, why is this song such an earworm? With a link to a clip from the film with the song, Ya Ya Ding Dong. I listened to it, said something about repetition, then I wrote, maybe I'll make a video with a deep dive into Ya Ya Ding Dong. To which he replied, please, please, please make a video about Ya Ya Ding Dong. And I replied, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. And yet, here we are. This is not going to be any kind of deep dive into the song, but why don't we have a quick look at the melody of the chorus and see if we can figure out some of the secrets to its catchiness. This is in line with our goals of finding insight about a piece through analysis. We have a subjective point, the melody is catchy, and we're going to try to find some objective evidence to back that up in the piece. Now, obviously one could look at the verse as well, but I think we all know the verse of this song only exists to get us to the chorus. Before we dig in, the original song is written by Gustav Holter and Christian Persson, who are from Sweden. I'm told in the context of the movie, though, this is an Icelandic bar song. Now, what makes a song catchy? Certainly the repetition does play a role here, and the onomatopoeic ya ya ding dong is very easy to sing along to. I would argue that something getting stuck in our head is going to be a combination of something that is simple enough that we can remember it and sing it, but also has enough complexity that it maintains interest. This is kind of the balance we strive for in all music. Clear enough so that our listener can follow it, but sophisticated enough to be interesting. Of course, different musical styles find different balances of simplicity and sophistication, and for something to be a poppy earworm, we need to be particularly careful about how we defy expectations. Okay, so here's my transcription of the chorus. The piece is in C sharp, which means I'm going to be saying the word sharp a lot. If it's useful for you, you can just ignore it when I say sharp, and then you can think about the piece in C major. Like a lot of choruses, we've moved to the four, the subdominant, and our goal is to go from that four back to tonic. That's pretty common. The ya ya is two C sharps, this is the fifth of the F sharp chord. Yeah, yeah. And the ding, ding dong, dong, we create a leap, a leap down of a fourth, leaping from the C sharp ding to the G sharp. The G sharp is the fifth of the C sharp chord, and very common when we have a leap, our next step is to fill in the leap. Nine. So the ding dong, we leap from the ding C sharp dong. to the G, and then we come back Nine. up to the B sharp. This is basic melody writing. It makes this line very singable. The B sharp is also the third of the new G sharp chord. Chord tones, roots, thirds, and fifths are easy to sing and are catchy. The chords, too, first four bars of the chorus, four, one, five, one, make a pretty standard chorus progression. Now, the second part of the chorus, things get a bit interesting, and we hear a bit of that pseudo Icelandic flavor. It starts out the same way, ya yeah, ya, yeah, yeah, ding, ding dong, but on the third measure, we go to a D sharp minor chord, still filling in that leap. But this time we're filling in the leap from the bottom rather than from the top. We're filling it in with that A sharp rather than with that B sharp. Another thing that's very interesting here is that we have asymmetrical phrases. What I mean by that is the first four bars of the chorus make a phrase. And then the second phrase of the chorus is five bars. It's almost as if we've jammed that D sharp minor in there, the additional bar. Another point of complexity might be the use of syncopation and switching back and forth from lines that are syncopated and lines that aren't. Ya yeah, ya, yeah, yeah, ding, ding dong. dong. All on the strong beats. One, two, four, one. Worth noting too that the ya yeah, ya yeah is performed with hits in the band too. But after that, the line becomes more syncopated. Bye. before coming to the end of the phrase, again on the core notes. Bom, bom, bom. Again, the switching back and forth from being yeah, on the beat yeah, and off the beat dong. contribute to this rhythmic interest. The second nine bars of the chorus are pretty much the same thing, with just a little turnaround at the end right before the cadence. Again, four measures, five measures, four measures, five measures, two sets of nine makes an 18-bar chorus. And these asymmetrical phrases add a little bit of interest and surprise. So, looking at this course as a whole, we have some unsurprising parts, 
the overall chord progression, the adherence to melody writing rules, and the use of chord tones, but we have those small points of complexity, the asymmetrical phrases, and the syncopation. So we've struck that balance of simplicity and complexity in a way that's very, very pleasing and creates a song that, that people want to listen to 10-hour YouTube videos of. It will never be enough! I only want to hear Yaya Ding Dong! Wait, you don't think this song's actually about 